The first video in the series will provide you with an overview of one of the basic tools used in intensive behavioral interventions, the discrete trial. The discrete trial is made up of several distinct components. Nice sitting, good girl. It begins with the SD, or discriminative stimulus. Do this. This is the instruction given by the therapist to the child. Next, the therapist either waits for the child to respond or provides some help in the form of a prompt if needed. Finally, once the child has responded, the child is given reinforcement, a reward for a correct response or a correction for an incorrect response. Yeah, let's try it again. Do this. Oh, right. Good trying. I like how hard you're working. You have just witnessed one discrete trial. After a brief pause, the therapist then begins another complete discrete trial. A discrete trial is made up of the following three components. An SD in the form of an instruction by the therapist to the child, a response from the child or a prompt from the therapist, and finally, reinforcement or correction if necessary, from the therapist. Let's now examine each of these three components in detail, starting with the SD. Though generally an oral instruction, an SD can also be nonverbal, such as a picture, a toy like Mr. Potato Head placed on a table, or the sight of a swing. You are super! A good SD must follow several guidelines in order to be effective. First, all SDs should be clear and consistent. They should be free of extraneous information. And finally, they should be delivered in a voice slightly louder than a normal speaking tone. Now we will demonstrate what a good SD looks and sounds like. Do this. <gasps> Way to go! Wonderful! Touch half. Oh, oh, that sounds so neat. What are you doing? Match. Whoa. Now we will demonstrate what a poor SD looks and sounds like. Touch my nose. Whoa, put one up for me. Where's my nose? That's right! Wow! Oh. Find my nose. Oh, that's super, Corey! We will play the good SD once again. Take note that the therapist speaks clearly and consistently, uses a short, concise instruction without extraneous information, and speaks slightly louder than he or she normally would. Do this. Way to go! Wonderful! Touch half. Oh, whoa! Oh, that sounds so neat! Do this. Good girl! Do this. Marvelous! Do this. Do this. That's right, Corey! Do this. Do this. Wonderful! Do this. Do this. Amazing! Let's go play! Oh. Now that we have covered the basics of delivering a good SD, we will move on to the next step in discrete trials, prompting or waiting for a response. When first beginning to teach a new task, the therapist should immediately prompt after giving the SD. One. <laughs> a prompt is some form of assistance to help ensure that the child responds correctly. This teaches the child how he or she should respond to the SD. Indeed, any time a therapist is not certain that the child is capable of responding correctly to an SD independently, the therapist should prompt immediately. 
The next step is the gradual removal of the prompt. This occurs once the therapist believes the skill being taught has been learned and once he or she is sure that the prompt is no longer needed. When removing a prompt, the therapist must be careful to avoid inadvertently giving a delayed prompt. This situation can occur when the therapist thinks the child knows the correct response. What does this say? The therapist gives an SD, pauses and waits for the child to respond, realizes that the child is not going to respond or is responding incorrectly, and jumps in with a prompt. The therapist must decide before delivering an SD whether or not to prompt, and if so, to deliver the prompt immediately after the SD. We will now move on to the third and final component of a discrete trial, reinforcement or correction. Once an SD has been given, the child responds in one of two ways. Either the child responds correctly and reinforcement is delivered, or the child responds incorrectly and a corrective procedure is applied. We will begin with reinforcement, which is sometimes called a reward. When providing reinforcement to a child, there are several key points to keep in mind in order to maximize its effectiveness. First, reinforcement must immediately follow a correct response. Reinforcement is given whether the child responds independently or with the help of a prompt. The second principle of reinforcement is that it should be enthusiastic and involved. If you are excited and enthusiastic when delivering the reward, the child will enjoy the reinforcement more and that will lead to better learning. Lastly, reinforcement should be varied. If the same stale rewards are used all the time, they will lose their effectiveness. Remember, Effective reinforcement is best achieved if given immediately after a correct response by the child, given in an enthusiastic and involved manner, and if the reward is varied. There is one eventuality that we have not yet covered. What happens if the therapist delivers an SD and the child gives an incorrect response? There are two general approaches to dealing with incorrect responses, one which uses an informational no, and one which does not. The traditional approach is to use an informational no. When the child gives the incorrect response, instead of giving a reward, the therapist responds by saying no in a neutral tone of voice. Oh. Where does grandma work? Um, he, he works in the house. No. Where does grandma work? Say, library. Library. <gasps> Boink! Yay! Now Let's watch that again. The no is not meant to be aversive or punishing. It is simply meant to provide the neutral information that the response was incorrect and will not be rewarded. Oh. Where does grandma work? Um, he, he works in the house. No. Where does grandma work? Say, library. Library. <gasps> Boink! Yay! Now you get Starburst! The therapist then goes on to give the same SD again, but on that next trial, the therapist prompts the child to ensure that the child gets the response correct. Another approach is to leave out the informational no. With this approach, if the child gives an incorrect response, the therapist pauses a moment without giving reinforcement, but does not say no. Thumbs up. The therapist then begins another discrete trial Thumbs up. and prompts immediately after the SD is delivered. There. This is to ensure that the child gets the response correct. Let's watch the errorless learning correction one more time. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. There! We have now reviewed the three components of the discrete trial. The SD itself, the prompt or waiting for a response, and reinforcement or correction. 
The remaining videos in this series will explore these and other topics in detail. We hope that you have benefited from this video and that you will continue to learn as you work your way through the series.